Hello and welcome to the Villa Park podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with yet another transfer talk show. The rumours keep going about Aston Villa players. Either are we signing them or are we letting them go? So had to get on and do another little roundup for you. First of all, though, thank you so much, everyone, for helping us to reach 4,000 subscribers. It means so much to us that you've helped us do that. So thank you for all your support. But we don't want to stop there. So please make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and get your comments in below, your thoughts on the potential incomings and outgoings at Aston Villa. I do also want to shout out our channel supporters, Football Prizes. You can visit their site at footballprizes.co.uk and at the moment they have a competition on to win a signed Pau Torres shirt so please visit their site purchase your ticket the the draw is uh, the competition ends on Thursday the 6th of June so you've got a bit of time to get your get your ticket but please do visit their site they've also got some fantastic other prizes as well other memorabilia other sports memorabilia as well but Aston Villa specific at the moment is the chance to win a Pau Torres signed shirt. So let's get into it. I had to come on and do this video because the rumours around Ollie Watkins have been gathering pace and yesterday it was reported in the Sun that Liverpool on a slot is a long-time admirer of Ollie Watkins as I'm sure many other managers are and many other coaches are but it was talked about that he might go in with a bid to replace Darwin Nunes with Ollie Watkins. And then Graham Bailey today has reported that not only Liverpool interested, but Manchester United, which has also been in the in the press, Arsenal, which we've known about for a few months, and also Chelsea interested in Ollie Watkins. And there's also been one or two Twitter and TikTok posts about, you know, what would be the, pot- the potential price that people would pay for Ollie Watkins. There's been I know speculation around the 100 million mark and look every player has their price and for me it's also about what would he be worth for Aston Villa and also what is built around him at Aston Villa and yes he he's obviously had a fantastic season 19 goals 13 assists and he's got double figures in every season in the Premier League with Aston Villa however the system is built around him. He's built, got a great relationship with Unai Emery and what he brings. Would that translate to another side? Would that translate to a Liverpool? Would that translate to an Arsenal? And would Arsenal and Liverpool fans be as patient with Ollie Watkins going through some of his barren spells, you know, like he has done towards the end of this season? Once he hit that 19 goals, he only scored one more goal in European football, didn't score in the Premier League. If a team was going for the title, would they have that patience to, I guess, wait until he got himself back into form? And that is the question with him. And would he be worth that value, 100 to £120 million? He's also got Champions League football with Aston Villa. He wants to experience that. Yes, he would experience that, obviously, with an Arsenal or a Liverpool. But why not experience that with Aston Villa? So for me, I don't see him being the one that would would go. I don't see those bids coming in for him. However, if a bid came in of 100 million plus, then I think you'd be silly to turn that down depending on who would come in to replace. For me, if it has to be one of the big names in quotes that would leave Aston Villa, I think it's probably likely to be more Douglas Louise. If it's a young player, it's likely to be Jacob Ramsey if that has to happen. But I still think there's enough in there in terms of fringe players, in terms of academy players. And if this ruling comes through with the club's vote to relax it slightly in terms of profit and sustainability, I don't think we necessarily need to sell any of our 
<clears throat> high ticket items, high ticket players. But you guys let me know your thoughts in, in the in the comments. I'm sure these rumours will keep going. If Ollie Watkins has a good Euros, if he gets picked for the England squad and does somehow get on the pitch and has a good Euros, it is only going to fuel more and more speculation. And we know what happens with Aston Villa players when they go on to international duty. So it's a watch this space with Ollie Watkins. But as I say, you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, Girona... Similarly to Aston Villa, have had a fantastic season in La Liga, qualifying for the Champions League as well. And now a number of their players are going to be on the radar of clubs. And, and one player who is interested in Aston Villa apparently is Viktor Tiskankov. Um, and he is a, a wide player and he's had a very, very, very good season this year. Plays uh, for Girona, as I said, signed from Dinamo Kiev, where he uh, played 156 times and scored 77 goals from 2016 to 2023 and then signed for Girona in 2023 and has played 49 times scoring 11 goals in the, as I say as a more of an attacking midfielder slash winger Ukrainian international and capped 51 times and has scored 12 goals he's 26 years of age and as I said they've had a fantastic fantastic season this year and a number of their players will be uh, on clubs radars I think the usual names Aston Villa West Ham Wolves have been linked with this player. So I do see a Premier League move potentially coming for him because of the wages and what he might be able to command. Now, if you look, left footer, uh, predominantly down the right-hand side, cuts in into onto his left foot. Now, Leon Bailey obviously does that. Moussa Diaby does that. But do we need additional options in that position? Played 30 times this season in La Liga, 26 starts, scored eight goals, which is not a bad return at all. And missed five big chances as well. So could have had more goals. Seven goals from inside the box. So likes to maybe cut inside to get past that fullback and curl it into the net. And scored one goal from outside of the box. And four goals with his left foot and four goals with his right foot. So shows he can go both sides. Seven assists and 12 big chances created. So very creative player. Very attacking player as well. 83% accuracy per game. 88% in his own half. And 76% in the opposition half. Which isn't a bad return considering he is a creative player. And will want to cre create chances. 2.9 ball recoveries per game. So works hard for the team. And as we know... Wingers, wide players have to do that these days. 48% successful dribbles, 52% ground jewels won. So quite a combative player, 10 uh, in terms of possession lost. So does try things, has maybe given the ball away, maybe needs to be a little bit more consistent. But yes, yeah, still very, very good player. And I think it's looking like the 25 to 30 million euros price tag. So let me know your thoughts. Wide players, we've t Emery has said it is an area where he wants to improve. Could this player be the one to to match it? Could he be the the, the name that we want to go for? Now, the usual yearly rumour of uh, Matteo Guendouzi is doing the rounds again, but a little bit more, I guess, concrete. Apparently, we've been we've been to see him numerous times. We've been quoted thirty million euros for him, and he has been on loan at. Lazio this season and has um uh, and and played 31 times and scored two goals they have apparently triggered the release clause uh, the, the loan clause sorry to sign him and it's apparently around 15 million so looking like they're going to do some decent profit on us to sign him from Lazio so yes sign from Mar to sign on the season long loan from Marseille uh, and then played the full season at Lazio, triggered the buy clause, the option to buy clause, but then looking like Lazio could be looking to make a quick book on him to 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 Villa uh, for around 30 million euros. Now, I don't know, is that good business? Is that something that we'd be looking to do? As I say, I had 31 appearances this season, scored two goals, so not too bad. Eight caps of France. I'm not too sure if he's in the French squad. You guys might be able to let me know in the comments for the Euros. But yes, he's obviously been linked numerous times with with Aston Villa. But could he be could he be the option in terms of midfield? He's predominantly played down that right hand side this season. M less less kind of creative than some of the other players that we've got, and that Tiskanov that we've be, we've just talked about there. Played 33 times as I said. Started 27 goal games. Scored two goals. 
hasn't really missed any big chances. So has he really got in those areas? Scored one with his right foot, one with his left foot. Only three assists this season. And has also created five big chances. But we know he's a little bit more of a combative midfielder. Accuracy, pretty good at 85%, 92% in his own half, 77% in his opposition half. And ball recoveries at 3.6 isn't too bad at all. And a little bit more kind of economical with the ball, slightly better with the ball than Tiskenkoff, 7.4 in terms of possession loss. So yeah, pretty decent player. But for me, I can't see too much in those rumours. If it was going to get done, I would have thought it would have got done last season when we had the opportunity. And then to round off the yearly rumours, Emil Smith-Rowe is being linked again. Could it be an option for us to sign at a cut price deal? But to perhaps resurrect his career. Is it a lazy link with Unai Emery being his, his ex-manager and from the Arsenal connection? But, you know, he's a good player. He played a few more games this season for, for Arsenal after having injury-ravaged ravaged seasons. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Could he be a decent option to come off the bench? We know what is Buendia going to be like in terms of his fitness We know we've lacked creativity in those areas. We know we've lacked a player who can carry the ball and and get territory or go past players and knock the ball into into little channels. So could Emil Smith-Rowe be that option? Now, another player who is, again, was linked last preseason, Alberto Moliero from Las Palmas, uh, has had an extra season. Uh, and could be could be an option for us as appeared 102 times now for the Las Palmas first team from 2021, scoring six goals. A bit more of an attacking again attacking midfielder, creative player, and has represented Spain at under 19 and under 21 level. And uh, yeah, very very good player can a very technical player as we know and could be a little jewel in the crown for Monchi or for Emery to to utilize again uh, we look at his sofa score details Uh, again this time that more down the left hand side and cutting in 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 on his right foot Um, and uh, yeah played 28 times this season started 21 games scored three goals not too bad return hasn't missed any big chances again one from inside the box one goal two goals from outside the box all with his right foot won a penalty as well and uh, has three assists this season and four big chances created so could be one to watch in terms of a developing player a player that we might be able to get more out of we know what Emery's done with Morgan Rogers. We know he likes players who've who are younger, who've played first team football, and he can he can mould them and and kind of get give, give them a specific role and get them to enact that specific role within uh, Aston Villa's setup. Accuracy eighty two percent and eighty four percent in his own half, seventy seven percent in the opposition half. Two point four ball recoveries per game as well. Fifty one percent successful dribble, so pretty good. Ten point nine in terms of possession loss, so maybe needs to be a little bit better with the ball. But again, in terms of standard of team that he's playing with, maybe that's a little bit more understandable that he's going to maybe give the ball away a little bit more. And um, yeah, and finally, a young player that we've been linked with, French under-18 international Matisse Lambord. And this just came on this afternoon, sort of late afternoon, under-18 international. Not really too much information about him, has played for, plays for Rennes. Uh, played for the second team and played 11 times, scoring three goals and has made one appearance for the first team at Rennes and has played for under se- France under 17, scoring nine goals in 16 appearances. And I think, I believe, is moving into the under 18 setup. Now, we know what the French are like with players coming through. They're fantastic, fantastic academy over in France in terms of their top youth players. So probably comes very highly rated. I think it's worth about 500,000 euros at the moment. Could be one to watch, could be a player that we sign and then loan back out or stays at Ren and moves forward. People are saying he could be an option as a replacement for for John Duran. I don't necessarily see that. I think he would be a young player, one for the future, and then move on from there. So we'll watch this space on him. Anyone who has watched any youth football, let me know your thoughts. Looks a big boy, looks powerful, looks strong, looks quick. 
And uh, as we know, the French academy, as I said, have very, come very, very highly rated. But I wouldn't see him pushing into the first team. I would see him probably getting experience out on loan and then maybe one for a couple of seasons time. But yeah, that's it for me in terms of the roundup. Ollie Watkins, could he be on the way? Could we be getting a big bid in for him? And Emil Smith-Rowe, Matteo Guendouzi, Alberto Malero, Victor Tiskanoff, are they players who might fit the bill for Aston Villa? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. As I say, thank you so much for helping us reach 4,000 subscribers. But we don't want to stop there. We want to continue growing. So please like, please subscribe and help support the channel. Thank you all for watching. And as always, remember, we all follow the Villa.